So I got a new video for you. Um, we're going to make a uh, leather wallet out of the uh, salmon skin that I've tanned in the past. I will uh, put a link below on how you do that. Um, you could wild catch it or you could store by it and then either eat the skin or you can tan it. <laughs> okay. Um, after tanning it, I wouldn't recommend eating, but I definitely would keep it away from your, uh, your dogs or something like that. Um, they might think it's something, a shoe toy or something, FYI. But nonetheless, um, this is um, what we're going to make. Um, it's salmon skin I did buy from a local grocery store some years ago. I tanned it, uh, put a video on how to do it. There's a kit that I have on how to make this wallet. So I didn't make the whole wallet, but I did do the lacing. Um, the salmon skin didn't fit the whole pattern, so I did have to splice in some here. So there's my stitching, which isn't the best, but it works. I'm going to add some other embellishments. Um, I added a little bit of dye to it. Uh, otherwise, it was quite pale, but it's up to your um, your choice. So, yeah, this is uh, what we're going to make um, if you cho have chosen to tan salmon skin. <laughs> All right, so I have two different wallets, and I'm changed, switching out my wallets right now, right? This is my first one. It's all black because the, the skin that it's uh, made of is actually Stingray. This used to be a little bit more white, and I think it was just because it was dyed that way. Um, so because of the, the dorsal part had a little bit more white. It's kind of nice. You can see the texture on it. You know, this is a stingray. I did not tan this. I bought that from Tandy Leather. And then I bought the kit and, and, stitch, and laced it together. Uh, so in this video, more or less taking a similar kit not the same kit and doing the same thing but we're going to do it with salmon skin that is home tanned okay so it's ready for use now this is from tandy leather this is the kit that i'm using for this i explain kind of how i go through the process um tandy leather has some really cool small projects and things like that um that i enjoy working with i enjoy learning from to be honest um, you know, so yeah, you get to a point where you get, you, you, you can start to modify some of their, their pre-made kits, but that's where this particular, uh, uh, project came from. Now, before we begin, um, this is the finished product. This is what we started with some tanned salmon skin that I, that I had in a, done in a previous, uh, video. And again, it could be well caught. Again, I, didn't go fishing for salmon and catch it. I would be honest about that if I did. Um, I went and spent some money, you know, some years ago and bought a whole salmon. I think at the time it was probably about 40 bucks. Um, and D, you know, fleshed it. Or, yeah, D fleshed the skin and then ate the skin. I ate the flesh, obviously, and tanned the skin. So this is the skin side. This is the scale side. It was also descaled. Right, and I have a whole video on that, like I mentioned. Here's another piece, here's another one I did. Some of it, depending on the process of how you tan it, comes out really stuff supple. Some of it, you know, is it can be kind of cardboardish, but it all works the same because over time it's just flesh, um, skin, and it'll get more flexible. And in fact, even in the 24 hours that I've finished making this at the time of this video, I can tell that the outside of this has become much more supple than the finished product. Now, there is a color variation as you can see. Well, I added some dye, which actually adds some really interesting textures to it. I could have dyed it completely black and it would look like snake skin, yada yada yada. I could have dyed it green or whatever. If you catch a rainbow trout and you want to tan rainbow trout, it, I have never done it. I don't know if it's possible, but I'm pretty sure you could do it I'm willing to bet money on that but um, uh, you could paint it and in in accentuate the rainbow color in a rainbow trout wallet right or whatever you choose to make but yeah this is this is how it ended up I thought about leaving it with a natural color but I said now nah, let me try the dye and the dye actually seems to work and the people that I've shown so far uh, uh, seem to like it seem to enjoy it, it, the, it even some of the oddities um, there are some mistakes in here that I did I'm not going to point them out directly but you know this is what we started with this is what we started with 
using this pattern to get to this. So let's get started. All right, so <clears throat> I, uh, again, I'm not, I don't have a uh, sponsorship with Tandy Leather. There's other leather manufacturing companies. It's just a place that I have found in my area that I can go to to get leather working uh, crafts and, and tools and things. On uh, and, and so anyways, um, oftentimes they have these little small little projects that you can work on your own and this is a wallet i need a new wallet i need to make a new wallet rather and this is one where it comes with the wallet and you do the double loop lacing in it and you can do you can stamp in uh your decoration and stuff like that and then of course it holds um different uh cards and money and things like that um i am going to modify this now i've used a similar product for my current wallet right and they were selling they were selling stingray uh pelts um that i used to make this out of but as you can see the lacing has come undone obviously it's used there it was a ridge on top of here if you can see that it's kind of faded out but it was more white but the stingray i do like the stingray i do like that so what i want to do is i want to i want to do something else with it um or rather i want to make another one it's going to be replacing uh this current wallet um so we'll see what happens now um a few years ago um, I've shown some videos on how to tan a salmon skin, okay? Uh, more or less, the process is the same, and here's some end products. It's not as supple as I like it, but it still worked. Um, it still worked for this current product, so I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, previous wallet, but I'm going to use salmon skin instead of stingray. And I have just enough to cover the, the base okay so if i open up this kit because this is all it is it's just a kit um and again the cool thing about these kits is you can look at them and you can reverse engineer them and modify them so on and so forth but they already come with the leather um pieces um that already have have the holes punched in them you know for your your lacing um they come with instructions and all the other accoutrements um, so this is going to be more or less straightforward because it's not the first time I've done this, uh, particularly with this set. It's just a little different. So this, um, what I intend to do is again, like my, like my, uh, previous, um, leather wallet or, uh, <laughs> yeah, wallet that has leather on it. Um, you know, I want to... You know, I, I want to kind of, you know, emulate this, although the inside is a little different, right? Um, so the outside is using Stingray, and I've gotten some compliments on this when I when I pulled it out uh, in the past. So what I want to do now is make a new one and replace it with the fish skin, the salmon skin. And I barely have just enough to cover the surface of this wallet. So there's gonna be gonna be some modifications that are gonna have to be done in order to uh, make those modifications. So I'm gonna and there's gonna be yeah there's gonna be some things gonna have to be done in order to make that modification. But I think this will work out um, because I have th this big piece and I have another big piece which will leave me some remnants to work, make some other pieces but um yeah so this will be the beginning of it so i just wanted to give a point of reference so you know where i'm starting from and uh, this will just be another project that um is long overdue for me that i'm gonna go ahead and begin doing uh what i want to do first before i start dealing with the uh salmon skin is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stain this because again, and the instructions here, they uh, they give you a pattern. 
And so if you're familiar with tooling leather, this is the tooling pattern and this is what it's supposed to look like here when you're all done, if you do it right. And it's actually very nice. I'm not, I'm not boohooing that. I'm just saying I'm not going to do the tooling, but the, the, this is what you learn how to do when you start doing leather work is how to tool the leather. All I'm going to do with this is dye it because actually the uh, skin of the salmon is a little bit translucent. So in theory, I'm believing that the way to finish this up, it would be better if I had more of a darker background for this to start on. And so my thought process is I'm going to uh, dye this brown and then we're going to, I'm going to make a, a piece that's going to fit this area of the wallet, the leather part of the wallet back facing. And then I'm going to stitch pieces together so that um, it, it's all one piece more or less, but it's going to be, um, it, it'll be cohesive. And uh, I don't want to just glue it because over time when you pull it in and out of your back pocket or your pocket or whatever, it, it, it'll come up. So there will have to be some stitching that will have to be done once this is all put together. So. This will be an interesting little project to see if I can uh, make to come to fruition. And then th this kit comes with lacing for the double loop lacing. It just, it, it, as far as I can tell, it doesn't come with a lacing needle. So that's something you're gonna have to buy if you choose to get something like this. And then here's the inside parts where your pockets and, and things go. It's already sewn and put together. You just have to stitch everything together is what you have to do. So it just kind of goes in here like that and then it folds and you got a wallet. So uh, the main thing is I'm going to go ahead and dye this or stain the leather part and then uh, we'll work on the uh, salmon skin. All right, I have my dye set up. <clears throat> All set to go. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and stain this. I can stain it inside and outside. Yeah, it's best to wear gloves, but this is brown dye. It's not the black dye. I've got a little uh, uh, box top that if things spill, it's difficult for them to spill and if they spill is contained because leather dye is very volatile. Um, it, it pretty much stains any and everything. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, stain the back of this with a kind of a brown texture which I think will work really well because like I said, the snake skin is translucent, meaning you can partially see through it. It's not transparent, it's translucent. So I, I don't want it completely white. And this, this beige, light beige, light peach color of this, this vegetable tan uh, cowhide um, may give an effect that you know I don't want right now. You know, I just, I'm gonna do something else. So this is an optional thing. And I actually thought about dyeing it black, to be honest. Um, but I really don't want to mess with the black uh, right now because it can be very, very volatile. It just starts to, you know, if you spill it and then it gets on your fingers and all this and that, it can be a bit of a problem. So we just want this to kind of come through it here. I want to make sure I get the edges and I could stain the other side, but I get the edges a little bit. But again, this is going to be covered with lacing, so I don't think that's really not a big of a deal. And again, the back, the, the inside or the flesh side, the suede side of this piece of leather, it may or may not be seen, but I'm going to cover some of it. I'm going to use what I have here just to be on the safe side. So I'm hit these edges here and then um, stain the back of it. Okay, so I do this. Okay, we have stained the, the front side of this and I'm just gonna test this a little bit. It's still a little wet, but I just wanna make sure that, yeah, it, it yeah, so it, it, it's going to this this is <clears throat> on the, the, the salmon skin the darker side is kind of like the dorsal part or the back part and the white the lighter side is the belly part so um, the belly part which tends to be a little bit more translucent will um, 
be its natural color against this. And I may treat this after we're done as well. Um, but for now, I just wanted to make sure that it, it, it didn't, um, it wasn't too light colored. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry. And then we're going to treat um, the, um, we're going we're gonna to treat the salmon skin. And then we're going to sew it together because as I mentioned before, this is almost the right dimensions, but we have some spaces that are not going to fit here along the bottom here. So I want to make sure we have a solid rectangle space that we can cover here. So, and that may require some sewing, which I think, I think will give it some character. I think it'll be kind of nice. It'll be a nice little kind of a char character additive. Okay, so we have our um, salmon skin here, tan salmon skin, home tan salmon skin. And then we have our leather back uh, that doesn't quite fit. It, it's almost there, but there's gonna be some places that don't fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna splice or sew some pieces of the uh, salmon skin with another piece. Heck, I might even use the same piece because this is this is actually essentially the same piece. I may do that. Um, and I really hate cutting into my material, especially material that takes time to create. Um, but yeah, this is what we're gonna have to do because it just it doesn't quite fit the dimensions. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna to need to take some water and we're going to need to wet down our um, our skin. And then we are going to use some rubber cement and we're going to, uh, you know, basically go from light color to light color in the areas that it doesn't, doesn't, um, uh, doesn't fit, right? And then, once that sets, we're going to saddle stitch or stitch it in the places where they don't fit. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thought process just because um, I don't have any bigger pieces and this barely fits. You know, maybe I can fudge it on the edges here with the, with the lacing. Uh, and maybe when it's wet, it'll 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 stretch a little bit. But this whole area here, we gotta cover that up. This is not gonna work. So that's that's the plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just outside of this area, and I'm gonna use this other piece here, this end piece here, to cover up the areas that don't fit. Now what I want is a piece that'll fit just like this, okay? And that kind of blends in a little bit. Not perfectly, but a little bit. But let's play with the colors here. Let's see what happens if we do it this way. Okay, that actually matches better, uh, to be honest with you. And if I do my stitching right, it'll, it'll be okay, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, and I don't like doing too many cuts in case I make a mistake, but we're going to go ahead and cut this right here. And then we have some left over if we need to cover some other places up. But this is more or less how this piece is going to look. And I believe once I get uh, the uh, salmon skin wet, it'll kind of be a little bit more supple for us. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to move our remove our leather piece. And let's see here, if I have a writing tool, I'm not nearby, but I'm just eyeball this. We'll, we'll place, it, place it together. What I wanna do is just start getting everything wet. So I'm flipping it over to the flesh side. This was next to the flesh that I ate. <laughs> and this side is the scale side. And we're just gonna make it wet with water. Not too wet, 
you know, but we want to moisten it so it's not so stiff. Depending how well you tan it or stretch out the skin, it usually will turn out pretty supple. But I don't need it to be like sopping wet. Because what happens is it will shrink a little bit. But we want it just enough so it starts to lay down like that. And um, over the years, I don't know, I did this probably about seven, eight years ago, um, I believe. Um, no smell, you know, this, this is just tanned salmon skin. I've tanned um, snake skin. I haven't tanned, you know, frog skin or anything like that, but I've tanned snake skin before. Uh, just didn't film it at the time. So we want it like this. So now... I can kind of start to pull out the edges here because we're worried about the edges. And everything will be glued down. So that's, you know, we may have to wet it down just so stuff stretches, right? But yeah, but we don't want it too saturated. So I want to get it just like this to where, yeah, you know, most, most of this, when we get ready to tack it down, it, you know, it's either going to be covered by the the lacing or um or it's gonna fit and then we'll take this piece here and glue it just like that so and then we'll, once it's all glued down we'll stitch it all together as one piece and then cut out the piece glue it down to the leather with the rubber cement and then we can lace everything together so it should should all work so that's the thought process that's probably how this is going to work out but yeah so next thing next is um i'm going to grab some newspaper just so i don't make a mess and i'm picking everything up and ru rubber cement works pretty well this way so this is a little moist but it's not, you know, it's not completely wet. And what I want to do is I want to um, put the rubber cement where we want to lay this down. All right, and so I've got the rubber cement here. Now I want to lay this down like that. Let me measure twice, cut once. Make sure we got this right down here so it kind of at least the colors blend a little bit. So if I'm doing this correctly, what we want is I want to apply rubber cement to this edge. Okay, like that. So we'll set this aside. And because rubber cement can be a little bit all over the place. All I want to do is just add rubber cement to the edge here. And because I'm adding the rubber cement to the edge, it'll, it, it kind of can get messy and get into places where we don't want it to get. So that means we need another piece of newspaper. Or we could flip this one over. place that on top of it like that so I'm not concerned right and then now we can take our uh, other fish skin and place it on top like that just like that and then what I want to do now is I'm gonna put a weight on this for a little while so I'm gonna take my I have a marble slab for leather working I'm going to just put this on here for a while. Um, and again, the places that are lifting up, I could possibly, you know, try to be surgical about it. I doubt it because um, otherwise it just gets everywhere and there's ways to wipe it off. But, you know, I, I want everything to be tacked down so that sewing is easier. Okay, so now what I can do is put my um, leather slab on 
and this should more or less cover the surface of what we need. Yeah, it, it, it should cover the surface for what we need for lacing. But before we do all that, I want to sew it. But before we do all that, I want it to lay down. So we're going to put uh, our marble slab, which is considerably, it's got some considerable amount of weight. And to be honest, I don't want it on the newspaper because the newspaper, because it's wet, may pick up some of the ink. Um, on my little cutting board here, I can just do it that way. And if any of the glue seeps out, it'll be easier to peel the skin away from. So if you don't have a metal slab, some books, phone books that you want to discard or don't need will work just fine. So I'm going to let this sit and dry probably for an hour or so and then we'll begin our stitching. So it's been about a half hour or so. The uh, fish leather is still somewhat uh, supple and um, with the weight of the marble here um, <clears throat> I was able to kind of create a, a seam here. Now all I gotta do is I'm gonna uh, stitch this. I'll probably just use a, a chain stitch just so it stays together in one piece and I'm gonna try to get it as close to the edge as possible so there's no way that it can be uh, lift it up. So I'm going to take some time to do that and then we can attach it to the we can start putting our wallet together Okay, so I'm saddle stitching and this may not come up or not saddle stitching I'm chain stitching the two pieces together even though that they are um, rubber cemented together uh, I do have a video on uh, back stitching and chain stitching. I'll uh, post below it, you may not be able to see it. I don't. I'm, I'm only one person here. I can't have anybody zoom in. But I'm through one side here, and then this back one here. I, I take my needle, and this is a pretty sharp needle, um, so I can go through both layers of the uh, fish skin, and then I go back through the same hole on the back side. So I went underneath the last stitch, and I'm going to go through the same hole, and then I go on the opposite side and I can find a space and poke through. Sometimes, depending how tough the leather is, it's good to have a piece of leather that you can use as a thimble to help push it through so you don't hurt your fingers, depending on how thick the leather is, but so far this is cooperating with me. And again, this isn't my best stitching ever, but it, it'll work. I, I'm, I, I don't mind things being a little bit rustic, right? So I'm going underneath the other side because this is the flesh side. And then once I go underneath, I'm going back through the same hole that I just came through. And then once I come through the, that hole, I can go, I can find my spacing and go in through the, uh, the leather, the fish leather to the opposite side. Okay, one more time, one last time. And then I go, I'm on the opposite side, I just poke through. Now I'm going to go underneath this. And now I'm going to go through this hole. So I'm going to go back to where I came through. So that's chain stitching. I may do this a little bit later on some larger pieces so that it's easier to see if you're not getting it. But it's not a running stitch. It's not the same thing. Um, a back stitch will work too, which is slightly different. And again, this is sticking. So now I take my leather thimble here and I can take this and I can kind of help force this through without hurting my fingers and then I keep on going. If I need to tack this down some more, then I just take some more rubber cement and tack it down. So that's really it. And um, this is actually working out as the uh, leather is kind of drying up on me. I may have to reconstitute it, make it wet again. Um, but for now, I think I can make it before I have to do that. So that's really it. We just want to stitch it together and I could have used some white stitches or some base stitches so it actually blends a little bit better, but I don't I don't mind. I think rustic it, having a rustic piece gives it character in my opinion. So, you know, when someone says, "Hey, did you make that?" you can say, "Yeah, I made that." You know, it's like, "Oh, that looks kind of cool." You know, I mean, if it looks crappy, it looks crappy. I mean, you, there's a certain aesthetic that goes along with uh, how the quality of work that you do but 
that's one of the beautiful pieces about handmade stuff is that it doesn't always is not always perfect um and that's fine too it doesn't have to always be perfect either some people become perfectionists and then they never do anything or they didn't get done because it wasn't perfect and i don't necessarily believe in that um if you're doing it for somebody else i get it but we are human beings and we are not perfect as much as we'd like to be the sh striving for perfection is the key daily so i'm almost done with this piece and i'm just going to lock it off with a few overhand knots and then we'll be ready to um tack this down onto our leather so it really doesn't take that long now we're getting up towards the spine so it's thicker so i use my thimble and push it through on the other side go underneath go back down and i think this may be the last one the last stitch so and then we'll go through this piece here and stick it in and i'm gonna use my thimble push it through and that's it now I'm just gonna lock everything off I'm on the back of it and then I'm gonna do an overhand knot and then double do it twice and again this is gonna be glued down so the stitches will be protected and then I'll do it one more time with just an overhand knot and we should be good and again, I'm doing I'm doing this with waxed uh, black thread. It's not the um, uh, waxed nylon that I like to use for my rustic work. But yeah, so there we have it. It's all stitched together again. Not my best work, but it'll work for this project. And again, it's it's close enough to the edge to where if it rubs against something, it's not going to come off. We just snip it off. Now we have our um, fish leather sewn together. I want to make this a little bit more supple but not completely drenched. So I'm just taking my spray bottle, <clears throat> taking a towel to kind of work through the moisture but also pick up extra moisture. So as long as this can kind of stretch is what we want and what we need. And then once we get there, it's good enough for now. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to pull out more newspaper. Okay, because now, and the suede side or the, um, the flesh side is up. We want the smooth side down. And now we want to <clears throat> put our rubber cement down or, you know, glue. Uh, Elmer's glue is used often. Um, we don't want anything too permanent because we may have to move and adjust things. So I would not recommend super glue, for example, or epoxy. Because once it sets, it sets, and then you know you have to start over again. So I want to make sure I get the tips. The tips are where things tend to come up. And this is what we want. We just want the whole thing to have glue on it. And I'm gonna put a little bit more than I normally would. <clears throat> just to make sure things stick. Okay, now because we used the paper as a backdrop, we're gonna fold the paper over so we have a clean side that our fish leather <clears throat> will not stick to the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lay this down. And while it's still supple, I want it, yeah, I want to spread it on here and 
have it just like that. So it's covering everything we needed to cover. I'm glad we um, <clears throat> dyed the uh, leather because I can kind of see through the leather now, but that's probably because, see through the fish leather because that's probably because it's a little wet now. But I want to just have this um, tack down. So what we're going to do is um, take our weight again and we're going to put our marble on here and let it sit and make sure it's you know tacked down pretty good probably for another half hour or so but the weight will be evenly distributed <clears throat> the weight will evenly be distributed and then we can get things ready for lacing and we'll have to do the same thing for the end the um the end the 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 parts that are on the inside the way that this the way that this kit is put together so this part um, we'll have to line up the holes and everything because there's holes in this uh, for stitching and uh, we'll have to line everything up and tack it down glue it down so that's that's where that comes in so yeah that's the next step so we'll just let this sit for a little bit and then we'll get to tack this down and then we'll get to lacing All right, so this is tacked down for the most part. Um, yeah, so what we want to do now next is to cut this out. Um, <clears throat> and so we want to be careful about how we do this because this particular piece has um, some different, um, has some round edges here, okay? So we still make sure it's tacked down. I still have rubber cement in hand in case things come up. But I need um, my sharp edge and a, a straight edge ruler so that I can be real precise about how this is being cut. We're going to cut into some of our stitching, but like I said, that's the reason why we tacked it down uh, with the rubber cement. So sometimes I'm just going to do this, and I'm just using an X-Acto blade. Maybe I should use my utility blade. There's that piece there. So we'll, we'll give a chance with the uh, utility blade because I think it's a little heavier. Otherwise, we'll come back to the X-Acto blade. And again, we don't want to cut the leather piece. We just want to cut the uh, fish leather, the fish skin. Uh, it's easier on one cut. Then I could cut the tips around, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them just as they are. And the um, lacing will bind everything together. a piece cut out um, again you can kind of see some of the uh, the beige of the leather coming through um, but it's okay it'll be more opaque when it dries I could have done it in black but we'll be all right and I am I lied I'm gonna just cut that piece off there but we already cut the stitching so we can't handle it too much too roughly okay so this is um, our piece here, it's all cut. And so now what we need to do is we need to, this is the in, in, inner part of the wallet. And we wanna figure out which piece we want, right? Do I want, you know, I don't know. Do we want this side to be the front? 
or this side to be the back. I think this side could be the front, it's fine. So what we would do with this is we'd line up the holes here and then it's kind of like a natural bend that this comes with. Um, and it's supposed to, um, you're supposed to tack it down. But again, uh, it might be, yes, we don't need that. So we're supposed to tack it down. I may actually um, sew the pieces into place to tack it down and then I can go ahead and do my stitching and um, we won't worry about trying to use um, rubber cement to to lay everything down because my main concern was just making sure that the um, that our fish leather kind of uh, adhered to the back so I'm gonna take a needle and thread that I had before and I'm gonna tack down uh, the corners in the proper places and that will also help um, set and place the uh, fish leather and then we'll be getting we'll be we'll get to lacing all right so I've tacked down the corners each corner here um, to the inside um, part of the pockets of this of this um this kit, this wallet kit. <clears throat> and when I think before I started lacing it up uh, with double bu uh, double loop lacing technique or pattern, uh, I'm gonna dye this a little bit and then I'm gonna shine it up with some uh, uh, atomized leather, or excuse me, <laughs> atomized wax, which gives it a sheen and will also um, protect it, keep the dye from rubbing off. So this is a watered down brown dye. I just wanna try it. I'm, first, I'm going to try this on a patcher because this is my first time doing it. I want to see how, what kind of effect it's going to have. And then, uh, kind of. So it gives it a little bit more of a darker color. I kind of like that. I think that's what it needs. Um, it's a little pale, a little peaked looking. I could probably even dye this black and shine it up. It look kind of cool too. But I, I want I want some of the natural color of the salmon skin to come through. Okay. So before I stitch everything down, I just want to give this a little dye treatment. And then I'm going to take the uh, liquid wax and um, shine it up and then stitch everything together. Okay, so it's kind of slow going because in order to do my lacing, um, <clears throat> I, I have to go and there's lots of holes. There's lots and lots of holes. So I'm just, you know, watching television at this time because you kind of have to concentrate at this, this type of lacing to get it to look right and to turn out right. Um, I'm having to use an awl to go through every hole there's holes built in but they're not holes into the uh, fish hide so I have to poke through the fish hide each time um, and again I, yeah w without super gluing this down I could have pre done that uh, if I super glued it down but I didn't want to super glue it uh, down uh, permanently because I might felt like I might need to make some adjustments or whichever so as it's going it's slow going a little bit but that's okay um, Anything worthwhile is just worth going through the motions to get it done. So I'm having to, to wet and make sure that uh, the, the, the fish hide is supple. Okay. So I'll just have to come back periodically and, and just kind of keep making sure that it's supple because I don't want the fish hide to crack. Um, um, I've made an item with a fish hide before. I think there were motorcycle grips. Um, but I actually used, was able to use a sewing machine to um, to go through this, the, the, the garment or the soft leather and the hide itself. It was more of an inlay sort of thing. Um, but this time I'm actually doing this double loop lacing with this hide, so uh, with the fish hide. So we'll, we'll see. It's just going slow. Um, I'm going to get to the corner. I'm going to have to you know, treat the corner differently. And I'm going to try to get to this corner before I uh, take a break. Um, 
because for the second type of thing, you kind of want to take a break every now and again so that you um, don't start making mistakes um, and getting frustrated because I don't want this to crack on me, which wouldn't be a big deal. I would just glue it down and stitch over it nonetheless, but one less thing to worry about. So that's how the stitching is going. So here is the finished uh, piece all done. Um, and, uh, you know, I made some mistakes on the lacing. I was just kind of being lazy about it. But at any rate, I think it looks nice. Um, the sheen that I've added, and I thought about it, and I probably should have filmed the before and after so that you can make a comparison. Um, both ways look pretty good, right? So um, I'm going to show you some differentiation. So this is kind of what it looked like when before dye dyeing it right this is what it looked like after dyeing but then adding a uh, polyurethane now spray polyurethane now i yeah, i know it's not very you know, you know primitive tech yada yada i get it i get it um yet you know this project is kind of different kind of bends the rules a little bit and I, I I hemmed and hawed over a time just to see, you know, whether I should just keep it rustic looking, you know, and it looked nice. People, I got lots of compliments on it when I was sharing it with uh, some of my peers. Um, but I decided to go ahead and just finish it off with a polyurethane. I think it's six in one hand, half a dozen in another. Um, and again, even, you know, just with the natural look, right, the, 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 the. You know, this is some pieces that we cut off earlier. The natural look, even that could work too. It's just a little pale, uh, I believe. So I, you know, again, as we tinted it, and then that tinting it was just fine. But then I just said, let me go ahead and you know, kind of give it a, a, a true finished look. So this is the end piece. Um, this is how it looks. Open it up, and like I said, I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. And um, I'm actually very, very happy with how this turns out. I may make another. I may do it in all black. Um, or I may make a contest and make uh, one for, uh, obviously with better stitching, <laughs> make one uh, for uh, one of my subscribers uh, as a uh, contest. Don't know. Give me your feedback in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching. And again, if this inspires you or you got something out of it, uh, please be sure to uh, subscribe, you know, share, uh, put a little something in a tip jar. Uh, my links are below, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. That would be great.